I'm Jake and I do resin casting, stabilizing, uh, turn resin, all kinds of uh, resin related projects. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe for more if you like that kind of stuff. But today we're going to figure out how to get a swirling effect or color separation with liquid diamonds. I did a video pretty recently about the same thing with Illumilite Clear Slow. So today we're going to use this. What we need to know about this is it mixes two of these to one of these by volume so we don't need a, a scale. The working time on this is 45 minutes to 50 minutes somewhere in there so that means we have a long time and the claim on liquid diamonds which I've proved it in other videos I'll put a video right there um, is that they say that you don't have to have a pressure pot so we're gonna do that with and without a pressure pot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this and I'm gonna put it in a bigger container and the trick to this stuff is leave it in the bigger container till it starts gaining heat if you separate it into smaller containers, it's going to take longer to gain the heat and then that, that uh, it'll, it'll confuse you. So get a little bit of heat in this and I'll show you this as we go. And then I'm going to use the same colors on every, every uh, cast that I do. It's going to be, uh, these are all from Pearl X, uh, Sapphire Blue, this is Rose Gold, and this is Reflex Violet, whatever Reflex means uh, acid reflux I don't know so we're going to use those on every one of them and I'm going to fill this up as it get some heat put it in the smaller containers and when they get to I'm going to do one at about uh, 90 degrees and then at 100 or whenever I get done pouring those I'm going to remeasure the the temperature and you'll get the gist of it as we go liquid diamonds and this stuff here there'll be links below to everything uh, discount codes to the resin epoxy store where you get this stuff from 20 percent off that's pretty good so first things first let's do some safety one part of this two parts of this it's easy to tell because this is bigger than this it's pretty easy to do you don't need to scale or anything but if we're not going to use a pressure pot, then we need to mix this slowly. We have all kinds of time to do it. I have my temperature gun here. I have some cups nearby and everything. So the temperature of this right now is 70 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and start mixing it. And remember to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom and mix it good. But with, if you're not going to use the pressure pot, mix it slowly. So that way we're not introducing bubbles in there. I mixed up a lot of resin, so I'm hoping to do this in one try. If not, I have I have some more, and and uh, this is all fun, so it, it'll be worth it. The silicone molds in the toaster oven heating up. I'm going to get it to about 100. I want it to be about 100 degrees when I start pouring. That's just something that I do resin. It just likes the heat better. Let's just put it that way. We're five minutes in, it's barely gained any temperature, so you have all day to do this stuff. Um, I'm going to get this, these colors ready. Uh, periodically I'm going to mix this and check the temperature. Uh, don't walk away, because when this starts getting temperature, it, it, it starts getting it. So uh, pay attention. Uh, this has a little tiny, tiny bit of a smell to it, but it's not enough to drive you out of the shop or anything. Uh, I'm going to go crack the door, but it's, um, it's not bad compared to some, but there's a tiny smell. <laughs> so in five minutes to eight minutes, we've gained two degrees, it's 72 degrees. Don't let it fool you. It'll get you if you're not paying attention. When this gets to about 80 degrees, I'll go ahead and separate it out into these cups and mix those. And uh, I'll start pouring at 90 and then we'll go from there. There's 80 degrees and I'm about to put uh, equal amounts or pretty close to equal amounts in each cup. <laughs> 
So now we're just gonna put some color in here. I just want this to not be see-through. If these are pin blanks, I just want to not be able to see through it. So you're gonna use a little bit of this. Don't don't skimp out. I'm probably just gonna do a, I'll start off with like a, just a, two scoops off the end of this into the popsicle stick and do that for all three of them mix them and then see if you think they're thick enough and adjust accordingly and I'll show you in a second how you can kind of tell if you got enough on there in there and once again we need to remember that we're not going to use the pressure pot on this so uh, I have a habit of just getting after it but you need to uh, chill out a little bit and just mix it nicely So I'm hoping this camera up here will see but uh, So you pull it out of there even before you get it out of there you can see the stick So we need some more in there. There's not, not even any sense of taking the temperature because we're not mixed It's not going to be right yet. So This one's probably a little bit better. But I'm still going to add some to each one I'll go with another little scoop of each one, get it mixed, and then take the temperature. And this should be fine, right here. And I picked these colors because they contrast. There's, they're not even close. I mean, purple and blue might be a little bit close, but by the end of this, we want to see three separate colors. And uh, I think. This could be the ugliest pen blanks in the world or they could kind of look cool. My experience so far, you kind of can't do it wrong. They all look, they all look neat in their own way. So you get these mixed up, take a temperature. As soon as I get them mixed up, I'm gonna pour one set of pen blanks. I'm trying to show what the beginner is gonna do, the mistakes that are made. And that's normally what happens is as soon as it's mixed up, you feel like you need to pour it and uh, you're not waiting for the right temperatures and stuff. So. I'm going to pour one exactly wrong and on this mold right here I have it labeled one to eight so I won't get confused on which one's which. I'm going to go this way as the temperatures go up. I'm going to have another mold heating up in the oven right now because I'm pretty sure I might have some leftovers. So those are all pretty well mixed. I'll take some temperature, 86 degrees. So. I'm going to make sure this camera up here is looking the right way. I'll uh, mix them a little bit more and then we'll, uh, once it gets to 80 degrees, that's probably longer than what most people will wait. So it's probably better than real world um, what a new person is going to do. So I'll get this other mold out. I'll make sure the camera's right and then uh, I'll pour one. Should be able to see this pretty well. That's 88 degrees. So. Here's what a new person is going to do is you're just going to get it mixed up and you're going to just dump it in there and I'm going to do that. And the reason why I know that people are going to do it because I did it myself until I learned. And uh, so this first one's going to be, it should just be, you might see the three colors, but it's going to be a whole bunch of different colors at the end or just one nasty color. So here we go. And I'll do the same. I want to do two pin blanks on each temperature. And this is 88 degrees. So you're not even trying to be cool about this. And then We'll put the purple on top. I have some fill lines in here and I learned on my last video I need to go to the top of the fill line to have a nice uh, big blank. And that's it right there. That's it right there. And so what you're going to do is get a little skewer and then you try to make your little make your swirls and this already looks <laughs> like a bunch of different colors but that's the mistakes we make and that's what we need to uh, teach people how to get past it so i'm going to do the little designs in there and it's going to look cool but 
So now I'll go ahead and keep mixing these and wait till the temperature. And this one's 88 degrees, so I'll go ahead and write that down. We're at 92 degrees almost. I'm just gonna, when I get to the next temperature, I'll, I'll fill you in. We'll do some fast motion, look at the clock, maybe play a little music, all that kind of stuff. And then we get to the next temperature, I'll pour another set and uh, I'll show you. Ninety four starting to kick off pretty good now, so we got to pay more attention. I'm not. I don't want to do this until a hundred degrees because I know from experience that about a hundred and twenty ish is. And I kind of chickened out too, so I'm not going to chicken out this time. We're going to go. I think we're going to get to a hundred, hundred ten, hundred twenty, or whatever, whatever we get to. But we'll know because I'm videoing it. <laughs> There is a hundred degrees, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna pour these ones, and now uh, I kind of just dumped them in there. I'm gonna be more careful on how I uh, pour it in there. Of course, these are pretty full, but I'm gonna be a little bit more careful and try to make some swirls to start with. Of course, I know this is probably not gonna be that great either because it's just not hot enough. Go ahead and mix them up. This one looks like an oil slick. 102 degrees already. We just went up two degrees just by that amount. This stuff's starting to kick off, so we need to be on our toes. <laughs> and I'm gonna shoot for 110 on these next ones. And you can definitely feel it getting warmer in your hands. The cups, that is. There's 110, and I'm going to start pouring this one. We'll wait for 120. It shouldn't take long now. 117. We're almost there already. <laughs> Ooh, it's going off quick now. Almost to 120. Y'all can see the timer the whole time. Hopefully there's not a glare on it. 47 minutes, that's about right for what the directions are. It wasn't very hot in the shop today. I came out here early to make sure it wasn't hot. That is 120 right there. So we're gonna pour this. I also put a number one and a number two over here so we won't get them mixed up. But I'm going to go to, ooh, it's 127 right now. <laughs> it's 120 and 127. We're going to pour these. Hopefully this top camera's getting it, but I don't have time to mess with it anymore. So now we have plenty left over, so I don't know. I think I want to go to another temperature. Might not be able to see it, but I have two more of these. We'll see what temperature we're at now. <laughs> this is 130. <laughs> Pouring a little too much at a time. Okay. Now, <laughs> I have this other wall too. I didn't expect to do this much, but we're going to keep on going. <laughs> I'm going to hold off on this one as long as I can. I want it to almost, I want it to be thick, almost too thick to pour. <laughs> we'll see what happens. That just said 140, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it in this last one. And we'll see what happens. It's thick now. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> it's 
So all this is not in the pressure pot, so it's gonna go, I'll have to go back and look at the camera to see which temperatures I'll have them written down here. When I come back, I'll have them out of the molds and right there, I'll show, I'll show you, uh, show me getting them out of the molds and stuff. And then I'm gonna do this again. I probably won't show you all this. I'll record it, but not show it. But I wanna do it in a pressure pot just like this. And then I wanna do it again in a pressure pot with pigments instead of mica powders. So I'll condense all that. This will be the long one. <laughs> so you'll know what I did on the other ones exactly the same. And then uh, we'll, I'll come back when these are out. Just because they say you don't need a pressure pot doesn't mean you might not have to pop some bubbles. So I'm gonna pop some bubbles with a little torchy torch here. Real easy. Like don't get in there. Don't stay in the same spot too long. Just as soon as it clears up, let it go. Yeah, they clear right up with a torch. Try not to burn my molds down here. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. Now we'll come back when I get them out of the, out of the molds. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about 24 hours, so I'm gonna take these out of the molds in order and put them, I wrote down the temperatures right here. I'm gonna put them in order the way they go so I don't get them mixed up. I'm still going to wear gloves because you handle this stuff. You think it's, um, it's not all the way cured yet, I guess. And uh, just through my experience, when you, right when you demold them, you're still going to, if you touch your eyes afterwards, it'll, it'll burn you. So wear your gloves, wear our glasses, and I'm going to watch me demold these, and then uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll give you guys a close up of these right now and then I'm gonna run them through the table saw. I'm not gonna sand them or anything yet. And then I'll show you again because this is deceiving. Uh, the, the top layer of it's really deceiving. You always really don't know what you're gonna get until you, until you cut into it. So I'm gonna do that. And then uh, I'll show you a close up right now and a close up after I the run through saw. So here we are, I'll give you a close up of these and you can, you can tell there's already, as the hotter you go, the better the separation is. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a pressure pot, but I'm not going to mess around with the 8800. I'll probably start at, I'll start at 120 and then go up from there in the, in the, uh, in the blue mold. And then I'll make one fat one. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it with pigments also. And I'm not going to show you any of that stuff, but if something spectacular happens or whatever, I'll show you. But when we come back, we should have some all of the blanks and then in a couple days i'm going to turn them it takes a couple days for these to be ready to turn or whatever so i'm going to go ahead and do that when we come back i'll have a bunch of blanks here so i have all these casts i'll give you a close-up here in a second but this is with no pressure pot this is with the pressure pot and i have the different um temperatures on there and that one's these are with micro powders and this one is with pigments and a pressure pot. So let me show you. Quick little rundown here. Here's the colors we used. And no pressure pot. The different temperatures. Pressure pot. Same mica powders on this one with the pressure pot. Same temperatures. And then the last set was with pigments in the pressure pot. Handwriting's horrible. I can't, I'm too old to change. Here we go. And I probably should have used probably one dark color and two light colors, but live and learn, right? And these are at the same temperatures. Look how cool that is. So now what I'm gonna do is every other one, say like these ones, I'm gonna turn one of those around and sand it and polish it. I'm gonna do that for every, every one of them so we can see what it looks like on the inside. This kind of doesn't help us that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn one and the ones that I don't turn, I'm gonna polish them probably just for picture sake and uh, do a little time lapse of that. Here we go. I 
I'm finished now. I took one of each temperature out of each one we did without a pressure pot, with a pressure pot, and then with the pigments instead of micro powders. I took one of each and I turned it, sanded it, polished it. I have a video on how to sand and polish resin to look like glass. It'll be up there. Um, that's a lot of that's a lot of work for an experiment, but I did it just so you could see the the difference. And um, this is pretty much what I thought it was going to be. Now we got color separation. Now I'll go ahead and give you a close up, and we'll talk about this a little bit. Here they are, the first ones we did without a pressure pot with the mica powders. There they are, and they started as as soon as we got it mixed up, kind of uh, 88 degrees, and that has no color separation really just looks kind of like an oil slick and as we go up it gets better and then the 130 is pretty cool and what we're looking for is color separation and not blending so there's definitely three different colors right there and then uh, That's 140, and it has definitely has three different colors. The interesting thing was I did I had a little bit left over, and I put it in just a regular uh, silicone mold, and I wasn't heated up or anything. This was at 140 degrees, and check out the middle, it's so cool. But I think the silicone was cold, and it turned the resin cold or the epoxy cold, and then it started blending. Look, it went back to oil slick. So that's pretty neat, but if you're looking for that, that's neat. But we're looking for color separation, and it's pretty obvious the hotter you go, and about 120 is about where it starts getting good. So, and this is without a pressure pot, and I don't see any anything wrong with any of these. So, and then I went and I did it with a pressure pot, same thing, same results. Here's an oil slick. <laughs> and here's some fantastic color separation and then for fun I did uh, with the pigments pigments in the pressure pot and I have horrible handwriting and that's just how it is so 110 the same temperatures and the same results <laughs> This one just turned a lighter green. And I, I did make a mistake. I should have used something a different tone because those almost look the same color in the, in the bottle. So that's why you don't see the purple because it's almost the same tone as the, as the green. But anyway, as the hotter we get, the better the separation is. Oh, look at that. That's super cool. Let's see. Pretty neat. Now we have color separation. Uh, I just showed that and swirling, I guess takes practice. Some of them have some pretty good swirls in them. I was more concentrating on just showing you pouring at different temperatures, getting the color separation. And that stuff just takes practice and I'm gonna do it. Uh, any tips and stuff, you go below. Zach Higgins and Pam Harris are pretty good uh, people to look at for that. I'll put links to their channels below. I did use liquid diamonds on this. I do have a, a link and a coupon code below. Go check it out. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, this stuff is not normally the stuff I use. I usually do deeper castings. And I do use some stuff that I that's right now. So this stuff, you have to leave it overnight and then you leave it another day before you mess with it. Um, that takes a long time. But when you need uh, something that with a bunch of working time, this is perfect or if you're if you're somebody that doesn't have a pressure pot or is afraid of a pressure pot or uh, just doesn't want to make that purchase this is a perfect solution for you there's um, there's always another way to do it so that's what I'm here to do is to show you so if this is your first time here go ahead and subscribe uh, check out the links below share this if it was helpful and uh, give me a thumbs up thank you and uh, we'll see you next time y'all be good